Hello, my name is Luis Serrano, and this is Serrano Academy and Deep Learning AI. Today, we're going to learn about Newton's method for finding zeros of functions. And this video is actually done in collaboration with Deep Learning AI because I have a course there called the Math for Machine Learning Specialization. And this is material from that course. I will tell you more about this specialization and the three courses later, but let's get to Newton's method. So this is how Newton's method works. Newton method is a method for finding the zero of a function. The zero is this point over here where the function meets the horizontal axis. So we're not going to find it. We're going to approximate it. And to approximate it, we're going to do the following. First, we're going to pick a random point. Random point is probably not the zero. That's going to be our first try. And we're going to turn that first try into a better try. How? First, we draw the line and see where it hits the function. Then we draw the derivative of that function there. We draw a tangent and we see where it hits the horizontal axis. That's our second try. As you can see, the second try is much closer to the zero than the first try. And Newton's methods say this always happens. The second try is always a better one than the first try. So all we need to do is do this several times. It's actually very, very good at converging. In a few tries, you get really close to that zero. And that's all we need. That's what Newton's method said. Now, here's a question. Why can't we just calculate that zero? We let the function equal to zero and we solve. We would do that for simple functions, but some functions are complicated. And many times this is a very hard equation to solve. But this derivative is very easy to calculate. So Newton's method takes advantage of those cases where you can calculate derivative easily, but not the zero. So now let's get to why would we need this in real life? Well, in machine learning and many other places, you would need to minimize or maximize a function that is finding the minimum or the maximum of a function. It doesn't look like Newton's method can help us here, but if you take the derivative of that function, then that minimum or maximum corresponds to the root over here in the derivative. So when we use Newton's method to find this zero in the derivative, then we have pretty good candidates for the minimum or the maximum of the original function. So now let's get to an example. And I'm going to pick a function that actually works really well for Newton's method is the function g of x equals e to the x minus logarithm of x. That function is hard to minimize. It's actually pretty hard numerically to find the exact minimum of this function. But derivatives are nice to find because the derivative, that is the derivative e to the x minus the derivative of log x, which is 1 over x. So the actual minimum of the function g is 0.671 dot dot dot. And we're going to see how many steps of Newton's method can we use to get really close to that number. So first of all, let's forget about g of x. And now let's look at g prime of x, e to the x minus 1 over x. And we're going to find the zero of that function, the point where the function meets the horizontal axis. And for that, we need to take now the derivative of g prime of x, which is g prime prime of x, e to the x plus 1 over x squared. Still, easy to take derivatives, but hard to turn into zero. It's really hard to get e to the x minus 1 over x and solve the x for that to be equal to zero. But the derivatives are easy to take. So let's forget about g of x because now all we care is about making the derivative zero. So let's call the derivative f of x and let's call the derivative of the derivative f prime of x. And this f is the one we're going to approximate its zero. So let's pick a random point. We're going to pick the point x zero equals 0 0.05. And that's this red point over here. And then we draw the tangent, which is this red line. And that tangent hits the horizontal axis at some point x1. Now x1 satisfies this equation. x1 equals x0 minus g prime x0 over g prime prime of x0. Why? Well, take a look at that triangle over there. The base is x0 minus x1 and the height is f of x0. So when you take the slope, which is f prime x0 because it's the tangent, then you have that the slope is rise over run. So you get this equation over here and this equation turns into this one on top. So now when we let x1 equals x0 minus f of x0 over f prime of x0, then we get this because we've calculated a derivative here. And that value is going to be 0.097. So our first try was 0.05. Our second try is 0.097. And as you can see, it's closer to that point of intersection between the x horizontal axis and the function. So we're doing a little better. Well, now let's do one more iteration. When x1 is 0.097, then we draw the tangent over there. We see where it hits the axis at a point x2. How do we calculate x2? In the same way as before, using the formula, we plug it into here and we get 0 0.183. 0 0.183 is 
the next point. And as you can see, it's closer and closer to that root. So now let's take x2 equals 0 0.183. Do the same process again, draw the tangent, see where it hits the horizontal axis at the point x3. And x3 will be calculated with the same formula as before. The value is going to be 0 0.32. As you can see, we're getting close to that root pretty fast. Let's do it one more time. With x3 equals 0 0.320, we now get x4 by drawing the tangent, seeing where it hits the horizontal axis. And then x4 gets calculated in this exact same way and we get 0 0.477. Now let's do one more iteration. With x4 equals 0 0.477, then we're going to draw the tangent again. We're gonna get that point of intersection and to calculate it, it's going to be x5 equals this number over here, which ends up being 0 0.558. We were supposed to get to 5671 and we're already at 558 after just five iterations. So that's pretty good. Let's do one more. After one more, then we have with x5 equals 0 0.558, then x6 is going to be this over here, which gives us the number 0 0.567. As you can see, we got really, really close to the root of that function, to the place where the function hits zero in just a few iterations. So this is fantastic. So you may be wondering, when do we use Newton's method and when do we use other methods to minimize a function? Well, here are some pros and cons. And I'm gonna compare it with gradient descent, which is the other method that we use a lot to find minimum maxima functions. How does gradient descent work? Well, you again pick a random point and then you again draw the derivative, except now you don't make it hit the horizontal axis. You instead take one step in the direction that the derivative goes down. And then you continue doing that, taking steps in that direction, always calculating the derivative. And at some point you get really close to the minimum. So when compared to gradient descent, Newton's method has some pros and some cons. What are the pros? Well, it's much faster. As you can see, we got really close to that root very quickly. So Newton's method is definitely faster than gradient descent. Gradient descent may need a lot of steps. Newton's method may just need a few. And we don't need to specify a learning rate because in gradient descent, you need to specify a learning rate. And if it's too big or too small, you may not solve the problem well. So you need to be smart about it. Newton's method, you don't need to think about a learning rate. You just apply it. So those are the pros. Now you may be wondering, why don't we use it all the time? Why do we still use gradient descent? Because Newton's method has some cons. So it turns out, as you noticed, that when we calculate one point based on the previous one, we had to do a little operation there with f prime and f and dividing. Well, that's easy in two dimensions, but if you have three dimensions, you need to invert a small matrix. And if you have more dimensions, you need to invert a bigger and bigger matrix. That's a matrix of second derivatives, it's called a Hessian. And inverting a big matrix is very hard. So if you're in a thousand dimensions, you need to invert a thousand by thousand matrix. That takes a lot of time because inverting a matrix is slow. So the rule of thumb is, if you're working in a few dimensions, like two or three, if your data set has two or three columns or maybe not too many columns, then Newton's method is fantastic. But if your data set has a thousand columns, that means you're working in a thousand dimensions, then I would not go for Newton's method because that step of inverting the Hessian matrix is gonna be really expensive. For that, I would actually go with gradient descent is much faster. So now you have one more method in your toolkit when you wanna minimize functions and do good machine learning. So as I told you before, this video is a part of a course on the mathematics for machine learning and data science specialization that I teach with Deep Learning AI. I recommend you to go check it out. It's a course that I really enjoyed building with the team of Deep Learning AI, and we really, really go deep on the mathematics that is needed for machine learning, but in a way that is fun for everyone and that is easy to understand for everyone. Because before the formulas, we give you a really good intuition of things with real life examples and with really nice friendly diagrams. The specialization has three courses. The first one is linear algebra for machine learning and data science. In this one, you learn things like vectors and matrices, linear transformations, determinants, rank, eigenvalues, eigenvectors, PCA, a lot of cool stuff. You'll get a good intuition for the linear algebra that's needed for machine learning. The second course is calculus. That's where this video comes from, where you learn derivatives, optimization, things like gradient descent, and some really, really fun visualizations that will help you get a grasp for the calculus that's needed for doing good machine learning. And finally, in the third course, we see probability and statistics. So you learn a lot of things, Bayesian probability, many probability distributions, 
and some statistic things like maximum likelihood hypothesis testing and of course a plethora of real life examples where you can apply these things. So I definitely recommend you check out this course. This first video is a sampler of the calculus course. Pretty soon there will be videos of the linear algebra and the probability and statistics as samplers just like this one. The links for the specialization are in the comments of the video. So thank you for your attention and see you in the next video.